So as I've mentioned, that scripture may have sounded familiar because this is part of a sermon series on the fruit of the Spirit. And last week, Pastor Bruce um, introduced the sermon series and began by preaching on love, which is the first of the fruit of the Spirit. And so this is the second week, and the second fruit of the Spirit is joy. So we're going to focus in on what is joy, and what does it mean for us today in 2016? So one of the first misconceptions that a lot of people have when we start talking about joy is the difference between joy and happiness, and sometimes it overlaps, but sometimes people think that their happiness is equivalent to joy. Well, one of the first things I want us to understand today is that joy does not equal happiness. So happiness is, circum is based on our circumstances, things that happen to us. If I have a great hair day, I'm happy. Happiness is temporary though. It doesn't last forever. I could wake up the next day and have an awful hair day and I am not happy. We are happy when we experience things of pleasure or things that are pleasant. Like a sunny day, when it's warm, when we hear the birds chirping. Those are all things that we experience that can bring us great happiness. But very quickly, things can change and the happiness will disappear. So one of the things that I read is that the more we try to pursue happiness, sometimes the farther it is from us. So now, let's, now that we know what happiness is and how understanding that happiness is temporary, that it doesn't last forever, Let's start to look at joy and compare and see how is joy different from happiness. And before I get to that, I do want to share just a little story with you. Um, and I love how a lot of times it works out this way. So this whole week as I was preparing for this particular message on joy, um, that's all I've been focusing on and reading all about different things in joy. And I just so happened to have a chance conversation with somebody this past Thursday at a Presbytery meeting. Um, she is the head pastor of Westminster Manor, which is a retirement community. And in this retirement community, there are um, assisted living facilities where um, people have their own separate apartments, but they do have people that come in and help them. They provide meals. They also have a skilled nursing unit um, for people who need around the clock care. And so she was telling me a story. She does, um, she's the head chaplain in this community. And so she was telling me a story about one of the residents that she has at Westminster, who every single time she walks into her room, she gets to experience the immediate joy that this lady has. She lights up a room everywhere she goes. Now, one of the things about this lady that the pastor was explaining to me was that she is immobile. She can't get around. The only time she really leaves her, her room is for meals. And even sometimes she has her meals brought to her. She needs help to get in and out of her bed. So a lot of times she is either just sitting in her bed or in the big chair that's right next to her bed. She doesn't usually get a lot of visitors because she doesn't have family in the area. And her room is usually left dim because the lights bother her. And so for us, we can stop and think to ourselves, wow, that seems actually very gloomy and I don't think I would be very happy if I were sitting in a dim room all by myself most of the day, not really able to be in and out unless I have somebody helping me. But this pastor was insistent and kept repeating over and over again that this woman was so filled with joy and 
anytime anyone in this retirement community was having a bad day or just needed to be lifted up in some way, they go to her room for a visit. And she talks with them. And she is just the most delightful and joyous woman. And she cheers people up and she brings others joy. And now as I was listening to this pastor tell the story, I thought to myself, wow, that is exactly the joy that I'm reading about. Because it doesn't have anything to do with her outside circumstances. There is nothing, there is nothing that can bring this woman down. And one of the things that the pastor told me was that it is because she is so filled with the Holy Spirit that she has this joy. So let us look at what the, the dictionary says joy is. This is the dictionary definition. It says a strong feeling of happiness, gladness, and delight. A state of contentment or satisfaction or anything that causes delight or gladness. So that's what the dictionary defines as joy. So in the Greek, the word for joy is kara. And this is what it means in Greek. Joy or delight, the experience of gladness. Literally joy a feeling of inner happiness, rejoicing, gladness, and delight. The person or thing that has this is the cause or object of joy or happiness. I know it might seem a little bit repetitive or that it's saying the same thing, but just to summarize, kara, or that inner joy that we're talking about here in scripture is a strong inner feeling of contentment or satisfaction. So we can take away from this that joy, the joy that we're talking about here in scripture, not happiness, joy is an evidence of the presence of God in your life. Just like the woman that I was told about who lives at Westminster Manor, it is evident that God is present in her life and she doesn't keep it to herself. Even though most of the time she is immobile and stays in one stationary place, she shares her joy with others every single day. So happiness depends on what happens to us, and that can change depending on the day. But joy comes from within. So then, now we come to understand what that means for us in our life in 2016. It is really nice to come up and share a message of joy with all of you. But the reality is that in our lives, we know things that cause us to struggle. And sometimes things in our life make it a challenge to feel joy and to share joy with others, just like the lady at Westminster Manor. Sometimes life is not pretty and things just don't go our way, so we're not happy and we struggle to find joy. We see and hear things in the news and on television and even sometimes experience tragedy in our own lives. Whether it's big or it's small, it's everywhere. Countries are being rocked by earthquakes. Cities are being destroyed by floods and fires children going to bed hungry, violence breaking out all over the world, innocent people being injured and killed, 
People are desperately looking for work in order to support their families. People struggle with addiction and broken relationships. The list can go on and on and on, on all those things that affect us and that can make it a challenge for us to see joy and experience joy in our hearts. Today marks the 15th anniversary of September 11th, 2001. Now, some of us here may not have been alive or even remember some of the events that took place on that day. It was a sad day. It was a day that many people lost their lives and many brave men and women did what they could to help one another. To put it in a little bit of perspective, just so we can somewhat connect, two billion people, so approximately one third of the world's population watched the events of September 11th, 2001. They watched it unfold in real time. That is a lot of people. And as we remember the events this day, and as we also see and experience the things that are happening all around the world and in this community today, lots of people want to know, where is God in the midst of all of this? And how do we find joy in our sadness and in our grief? Lots of people, many scholars, have spent their lives discussing this, wrestling with this, using scripture to try and answer all of these questions. And the truth is, I can't give you answers. The only thing that I can share with you this day is that we can experience joy in the moments of tragedy by knowing in our hearts that God is present with us, that God in the midst of tragedy is walking alongside those who grieve, those who are hurting, those who experience loss. God is with us in the midst of all of this. And that can bring us joy, knowing that we do not face these things alone. So I found a quote uh, as I was looking through about joy, and this is um, taken from Today and the Word, but this is from the 80s, and it says this, as a third century man was anticipating death, he penned these last words to a friend. It's a bad world, an incredibly bad world, but I have discovered that in the midst of a quiet and holy people who have learned a great secret, they have found a joy which is a thousand times better than any pleasure of our sinful life. They are despised and persecuted, but they care not. They have overcome the world. These people are Christians, and I am one of them. Do you see that sometimes when we have things happen to us or when the circumstances that are surrounding us take hold of us, it's very easy to think we have nothing to be joyful about. But remember, that is happiness. Those things that we see or experience may make us unhappy because it's always changing. But we can have joy because Jesus Christ is always the same. Jesus Christ is constant and always faithful, and that we can be joyful about. So how do we find this joy? What does it mean to bear these fruits of the Spirit? Ultimately, it's becoming like Jesus. 
spiritual fruit will show itself in our lives as a change in our character and outlook. As we spend time with Jesus and get to know Jesus better, his thoughts will become our thoughts and his purpose will become our purpose. We will become like Jesus. And it's all about attuning our heart to what Jesus wills for our life. And that is how we can experience the joy that is mentioned here by Paul. Remember, it is not about being happy because that can change at a drop of a hat. But having Jesus Christ in our heart we can have joy that lasts forever. Let us pray. Gracious God, we are so thankful that Jesus Christ lives within our hearts. We are thankful that we can have that joy and that despite all of those things that may happen all around us, that can cause hurt or unhappiness. We give thanks that you continue to walk in our midst, that you do not leave us abandoned and alone. We pray that we continue to keep that in mind and that when we leave this place, we can share joy with those around us. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.